Hi everyone, this is Brian. Um, I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, um, I'm going to be doing some tracing with this paintbrush. Um, I really like tracing videos. I've been starting to watch them recently and so I thought maybe I would try one. Um, and what I'm going to be tracing on This is, um, this is just a, a pile of books that I pulled um, a little bit randomly, but they're all books that I really like. Um, and so I figured I could just show them to you and do some tracing, and I might do a little bit of tapping and scratching, but I'm going to try to keep this one mainly a tracing video. So I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get started. So I'm going to start by just taking this end off the brush and putting this aside. There's the brush. I'll be able to do some tracing with the brush. So let's, um, let's start with the first book. first book. It is the Hans Christian Andersen Fairy Tales. I need to do this backwards, or, or uh, upside down, I mean. I'm sure I wrote some of those letters wrong. There are some quotes here on the front. Being born in a duck yard does not matter if only you are hatching from a swan's egg. That's from The Ugly Duckling. This says, shall we read this story all over again? It'll never be different. And the last one is the best, which is life itself. It's the most wonderful fairy tale. Can you see that one? Right here. See? I've always loved the, the stories of H.C. Anderson, who was, as you probably know, a very famous Danish author and poet. <laughs> they really love him in Denmark. They have an entire street named after him in Copenhagen. This is an um, English translation of the books, and uh, it's got a really nice cover. It's this kind of leathery material. Sorry about the sirens, can you hear those? And, um, yeah, this has got a nice sort of material. And on the inside, let's open it. There's this really nice.
this is a hand right here. Oh, it's a person. <laughs> Do you see that? This is this is his face. It looks almost like an old Norse god. His eye, and nose, mouth, and chin. He has a long arm. the sky and the sea. Maybe that's the sea. It's hard to tell. It's funny, I was looking at it upside down so I didn't notice the pattern. And in here, Hans Christian Andersen Tale. Birds like H.C. Anderson too. Let's see. Yeah, so this is actually his complete works. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of different books in here. I always liked the Princess and the Pea. Umbelina, The Little Mermaid, The Emperor's New Clothes. The Nightingale sounds familiar. And of course, The Ugly Duckling. The Snow Queen, which I think, uh, what Frozen was based on, the Disney movie Frozen. A lot of these are Disney movies. This sounds beautiful. The Old Oak Tree's Last Dream. I'd like to read that one. Anyway, um, I haven't read most of these. My mom gave me this book. She said that she read them and she bought the book for me, so she decided to read one before she gave it to me, and uh, she said that the translation was actually really bad. <laughs> she didn't think it, it held up to the original Danish version that she read as a kid, but I guess it will never, it will never live up to the original. So. Anyway, I will confess that I've had this book sitting here for a while and I haven't actually read any of them, but I'd like to, and it's always kind of nice to, uh, to read a short story now and then. Because you don't have to commit to reading the whole thing. To it. You can tell it's a new book because you can hear the spine cracking when I open it. If you can hear anything at all over that plane. Okay. The next book I want to show you is a little bit beat up. <laughs> For good reason. It's one of my favorite books. The book is by Italo Calvino. And it's called 
invisible cities. You can actually see it's a really, really nicely made book. I mean, it's clearly kind of well used at this point, but it's actually really beautiful. The typography is just really nice. You know. Um, and I've read this book many, many, many times. It's probably one of my very, very favorites. Um, it's really, really beautiful, and it's kind of hard to describe. It's like, I would say it's like a piece of philosophical fiction, and it's, um, it's just about different cities. The situation is Marco Polo and Kublai Khan having a conversation about all the cities, and in the Khan's empire, and, uh, you know, it's sort of one of these classic what if this person met that person things, but, uh, but in some ways it's, it's more than that, because he, you know, each chapter he's describing a different city in the empire. And, um, this one I actually want to read, just a little excerpt I found, just because writing is so beautiful. Um, like again, this is a translation. The original is in Italian. So I don't know how the Italian is, but the English is just written in this very straightforward language that's just really beautiful, but not flowery at all. A bit like Ernest Hemingway, but more, uh, maybe more poetic. I don't know. I have to hold the book in this direction while I read it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is what I was going to read. Oh, yeah. With cities, it is as with dreams. Everything imaginable can be dreamed, but even the most unexpected dream is a rebus that conceals a desire, or its reverse, a fear. Cities, like dreams, are made of desires and fears. Even if the thread of their discourse is secret, their rules are absurd, their perspective deceitful, and everything conceals something else. I have neither desires nor fears, the Khan declared, and my dreams are composed either by my mind or by chance. Cities also believe they are the work of the mind or of chance, but neither the one nor the other suffices to hold up their walls. You take delight not in a city's seven or seventy wonders, but in the answer it gives to a question of yours, or the question it asks you, forcing you to answer, like thieves through the mouth of the sphinx. I always just really loved that part. I always, um, I always thought this was just really beautiful, especially the last part about cities and questions. And it's made me think, you know, I, I really love to travel. And I think that, you know, I don't get to do it very often, necessarily. Um, but I really love to do it, and I always think now, when I go to a new city, of um, what questions do I have that this city is going to answer, and what questions does this have, what questions does this city have for me to answer? And, um, you know, I've been in New York now for about two years, so not that long, but at the same time two years is a long time, and I'm always thinking about this, I'm always thinking 
what are the questions that I have to answer? And what questions of mine is New York City answering? So it makes you know makes cities feel very personal. And that's what I like about this book. Is it is it's about the invisible cities. It's not about the monuments and the streets. It's not even always about the people. It's about the energy. It's about what's going on behind the scenes. It's about the city almost as a life of its own. And as you travel the world, which I'm sure you will do, I hope that you can think of that. Okay. Next book is a little bit different, but also a very good book. And it's maybe a little more well-known book. But this book is called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. by Mark Haddon and it really is such a such a really beautiful book and it's not very long you can see it's a pretty short book we've had this one for a long time um, but if you don't know what it's about it's about um, a boy named Christopher Christopher Boone who is um, just a really, really smart kid who has um, some sort of autism or Asperger's uh, or something. They don't really specify exactly, but you know, he has doesn't have very good social skills, but he is so, so incredibly smart. And this book is just a really really tender and powerful look at the world through his eyes and I think it can help you see the world in a different way and it's also very funny and very charming and really entertaining and just a really good I would say a stunningly good read so um, and I've had this book for a really long time. I read this when it first came out, which was quite a few years ago. Let me look. 2003. Yeah, so I, you know, that's 13 years ago. So I was a, a teenager, I guess. No, I would have been like, I would have been like nine or ten when I read this. And, uh, or maybe, maybe ten or eleven, I might not have read it exactly when it came out, but it was a little bit more of a mature book than I'd ever read before, but I loved it, and it really stuck with me. And even in this, as an adult, this is just a really, really good book. And I actually recently was able to see the play on Broadway. Um, I, I never go to shows because they're expensive and I, I don't know. I just rarely take the time to do it even though I live in New York, which um, I, I wish I did more of. But I went and saw this play and I have to say it, it absolutely blew me away. It's really, they did such a good job you know, this is one of those books you read and you think, how could they ever turn this into a movie or a book? Because 
or a movie or, or a play. Because the book is so... Um, you're so much in the character's mind. And... And you think, how would they communicate that? But in the, in the stage version, they did such a good job. Um, and I almost don't want to spoil it, because the, the technique that they use in order to show it is such a big part of the show, and all I can say is that it will absolutely blow you away and may make you cry. <laughs> so, I would highly recommend seeing the show or reading the book. It's really a very good one. Okay. Now this is actually my roommate's copy of this book, it's not mine. So we left the sticker on it. But this is a book called Brave New World. And you can't see the name, but it's by Aldous Huxley. Maybe it says it on the side. Yeah. Aldous Huxley. It's just, uh... big English author, um, who also wrote, I talked, I've talked about Aldous Huxley before in an earlier video when I had that, uh, record from The Doors, because Aldous Huxley also wrote a book called The Doors of Perception, where he took hallucinogenic, I think it was, he took LSD and wrote, uh, about his experience. And that's where Jim Morrison got the name for The Doors, the band The Doors. So there's your, your trivia. Um, anyway, this is a wonderful book. It's uh, about a future society. Oh, here you go. There's Aldous Huxley. Wearing his little glasses. Um, it's about a future world where... Uh, society is humans are bred by machines into different classes so they actually put alcohol into the into the fetuses of the lower classes I don't think that's a spoiler I can't remember it's been a long time since I read the book but anyway they they just they, they make them intentionally smarter and stupider based on the different classes and uh, but they control everyone by making them take a drug, basically, like a hallucinogenic type drug. Um, and so it's actually a society, it's not controlled through fear, but it's controlled through pleasure. But they're still um, ignorant, you know, they don't have access to history books and, and things. And anyway, it's, 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 it has a lot to do with today's media and today's society, and uh, yeah, it's definitely a good read, that's it, that's a good book, I'll show you the inside, just open the page and I see LSD written like eight million times. Very funny.
I have one more book to show you. And this is actually a book that I have shown on this channel before, on my very first video. So for those of you who have been around for a long time, you will recognize it. It's the most beautiful book that I own. Such a good sound, I had to save it for the end. So I bought this book purely based on how it looked, which is exactly what you're not supposed to do. But in this case, it's become <laughs> one of my favorite books. But that's because it's written by the legendary Irish author, Mr. James Joyce. The book is called... Uh, I'm trying to figure out which side is the front. Okay, this way. And if you're on that side, I need to turn. Okay. The book is called... Portrait of the artist as a young man. And this looks like an illustration of James Joyce. And um, it's a really beautiful story, and it's very you know, in terms of literature, it was very ahead of its time. And you just, you really enter this character's mind. And this edition is just so beautiful. It has these full-color portraits. And, and the way it changes, you know, in the beginning chapters, he's, he's a young boy, so his language is very simple, like a boy. And then as he grows older, it gets more and more complex. Like, uh, like the old days. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this is really beautiful. side of the book has this it's a nice sort of material. Thank you. 
pages have this gold material on it. you enjoyed this little tracing video. I sometimes, uh, I sometimes don't think about visual ASMR as much. It's more about the sounds, but sometimes I'll watch a tracing video or something and realize that it can be just as triggering. So, let me know what you guys think. Whether you like this other different sort of video or if you have any other ideas. Um, yeah, I want to do all sorts of different videos on this channel. Um, I do have some requests that I still need to fulfill, but if you have any more ideas, please let me know. I'm always trying to think of new ideas, things to do on this channel. Um, and if you're new, then welcome, and I'm glad, glad you're here. And please, uh, please say hi in the comments. I'd love to meet you. And let me know if you have any ideas for a new video. That's all I have for today's video, but I'll see you very, very soon. It's a sweet dreams, and good night.